Redshift is a super capable renderer, but up until now it was missing one really important feature, and that's the ability to stack materials. If you've used Cinema's physical or standard renderer, you know how flexible this workflow can be. Thankfully, with a new update, we can now do the exact same thing inside Redshift. Let's have a closer look. So here's a simple scene. We have this carton box and we want to apply a couple graphics on top. I've already created the materials needed, so the only thing left to do is to apply them to the object. Let's start with the text first. We'll change the projection to flat, disable tiling, and then switch to texture mode. Now we can just use the regular move, scale, and rotation tools to position the graphic the way we want. That's the beauty of material stacking, we can easily move things around until we get exactly the look we have in mind. And since we don't want the text to be projected on both sides, we can select the text graphic and pick front instead of both. Perfect. The process is exactly the same for the other graphic. By using this workflow, we don't have to rely on UVs or time-consuming edits. Doing this the traditional way would have taken a lot more time. We would have to have some clean UVs, create a texture with all those graphics laid out, and then if we wanted to make a change, we would have to resave and reload the texture file. With stacked materials, we have a more flexible and immediate way of working. One thing to note here, if you're working on an old scene, material stacking might not work right out of the box. If that happens, you can easily circumvent that by going into the render settings and creating a new one. That should take care of things. Now, how do we go about creating these transparent materials? The setup is super simple. We just need a color splitter node in between our graphic and the color output. The alpha from the color splitter node goes to the opacity input of our material and the texture goes to the color input. And that's it, you can now start stacking elements together. The last little tip I would like to share has to do with the aspect ratio of our graphics. Let's take this text as an example. The image is not square, so if we apply it to our object, the texture will be deformed. But there's an easy way to get the right aspect ratio. Let's go back to Photoshop and check the resolution of the image. We'll note down the width and height values, and then we'll input those into the X and Y scale values of the material tag. So we'll do 4096 on X and 1714 on Y. Everything will be huge now, but once we start scaling things down, we now have our graphic in the right aspect ratio. I've already used stacked materials on a real project, and I cannot describe how big of a time saver it is. So next time you have some complicated texturing to do, and you're still in the testing phase, make sure to use material stacking, you won't regret it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.